Hi, it's CB Voices of Color chapter. I am here with our final and concluding episode for the Men of Color in Advent series. And uh, this year we had decided to focus on the Men of Color in Advent because that's what God did. Um, God did not just use a woman, but he used a woman in partnership with men um, of color. And we want to make that clear that in this work, um, God is not expecting women to work alone. Um, he has created partnerships in many various ways. And so we look at that um, through our character today for this episode, who is Joseph, husband of Mary. And we see that Joseph was engaged to be married to Mary. And here comes the angel talking to Mary and telling Mary, Mary, look, you're going to be pregnant with um, a, a child uh, by the Holy Spirit. And this is the long awaited Messiah. We saw Mary's response was, hmm, okay, whatever you say, Lord. Um, however, we did not see Mary and Joseph were not in the same place when this angel came to Mary. And um, the Bible says that Joseph found out later on that Mary was with child. And um, I'm sure he was disappointed. Despite being disappointed, the Bible says he was a godly person and he did not see any need to disgrace her, to embarrass her. And, you know, something right there um, tells me that when God was looking for a woman to do that work, he was also looking for the right man to partner with her because here was a man who was countercultural, who showed respect to women, even when the women acted outside of what was society's norms, societal norms, he still wanted so much to have regard for this woman. It wasn't her, her what had happened in her life was not enough for him to disrespect her. I think this is something that God appreciated in Joseph because here was Joseph affirming that a woman was just as good as he was. Here was Joseph affirming a woman's right to do whatever she wanted. And even though he was not going to allow himself at this point to break society's norms by deciding to continue to marry her. It's like, if you love someone else, you know, you've been with them. I'm not going to stand in your way. That's the way it seems to me Joseph's um, uh, uh, a move was. It was not a move, oh, she's soiled now, but it was rather an acknowledgement. She had been with someone else. And therefore, perhaps this relationship they were in, maybe it was an arranged marriage. Maybe it wasn't meant for them and she had every right to be with who she chose. What does this say to us in, 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 in Christianity when we think it's our place to organize relationships for the people in our lives? Here was a man who was clearly recognizing a woman's right to even choose her partner and do what she needed to do. That was the first thing. So here he's made this decision. I'm gonna let her go. And um, it's no big deal. You know, she has a right, I have a right. She can go where she's chosen. And he's in this process of communicating to her that, hey, I know you're with child. You don't have to be with me. It's okay, we can end this. I'm not gonna um, um, uh, be, feel bad, no bitterness. And then the angel comes to him. And says to him, you know, um, who that baby Mary, Mary didn't have an affair. This is God working through Mary. And the Bible tells us that Joseph changed his mind based on that. The point I want to bring out here is the Bible told us about Joseph's character, this righteousness in Joseph before the angel came to him. And we see that without argument and the Bible would have put it there if he argued. The Bible was able to put other people's arguments in there. Without argument, Joseph believed the angel and chose not to break the relationship. And, and you know, something pops out to me there about the impact of righteousness, our own personal righteousness on the way we treat the marginalized in society. So for example, here was a man who apparently his reputation was going to be compromised by him being with a woman who was with child that nobody else knew the source of this baby except that woman and God. And now him 
and that woman and God. They only the two of them know the source. And it did not take much for God to convince him to stick with this woman. But I think the reason it didn't take much for God to convince him was because his own heart knew God. And so he knew God's voice when God was speaking to him about somebody else. And, and this brings me to a question, men of color. Men of color in positions of leadership, how well are you able to listen to the voice of God when God is pointing out to you righteous women in your community? Or are we more comfortable as men of color with associated women who fit societal norms as the ones who are right with God? Because right here, here was a man who believed in God, choosing to break with societal norms because God had visited him in private, not through a group of men, not through a committee in the church. He was a righteous man. God affirmed him. God spoke to him. He acted in righteousness. If Joseph had acted differently, so for example, if Joseph had acted the way that the man who was supposed to have married Ruth acted, it would have been a different story. The man who had married, who was supposed to marry Ruth, he was he he put her out there that because she was of another culture, she was unworthy. He practically disgraced her publicly. And here was Joseph acting like Boaz and choosing like, I will not, I will not do injustice to another human being like me, even if society puts her lesser than me. I will honor her as equally a woman of God, even if others around her have not honored her. And you know, this is a call to break that cultish men's club mentality that men of color, in addition to all men, tend to participate in. We tend to participate in herd, this herd mentality of the men's club. If the men don't sanction it, we're not going to do it. That's why we have men's locker room talk, because all of the men are gathering to do injustice to women, and not a single man has the courage to say, I'm a righteous man, I'm going to stand up against this thing. And Joseph stands in the Bible as an example for men of color that you can be different, that God expects you to be different, that God is expecting you to connect with his righteousness through his word. And how do you know that you can be certain for yourself? You can hear God for yourself. Women of color who are coming out and stepping out and getting on the high places and proclaiming the word of equality or being one in the kingdom of being joint heirs, they have reason for doing it. They have the word of God back in them. You might want to look into the scriptures. You might want to look into the things they write. You might want to look into the studies that are there and see it will God speak to your heart rather than just taking a place with the societal norms. Joseph stands in that story as part of the new creation, the new man in history who is not afraid to follow the leadership of a woman into something that is not quite societal, but which he has the confidence and the conviction based on God's word that this woman is right. What a difference that made to history, that Mary was able to bring up Jesus in that culture, not denying him his place. How does that impact us men of color who our children are being denied their place in society because a lot of us are running away from what, when God says we need to stand with the women. We live in the women to stand alone, to bear the burden alone, whether it be with uh, 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 theology, whether it be with child rearing, whether it be with economics, whatever it is, we're leaving the women to stand alone. We want to have a club of men. When really what God is saying is, if I said to a woman, partner with her. And so that's the word I'm, and the challenge I'm going to live with men of color today. This is your story, men of color. The entire scripture is your story. And God expects you to learn from the examples in the story. What examples in the story give impact to the story of the incarnation, to the story of Jesus in the world, God's son in the world. 
which examples give good impact and which ones give a negative impact. Go and do likewise. Happy Advent. It has been a joy to be able to share this with you this year. Uh, please, I hope this gives you much food for thought. And I'm looking forward in the new year, let some of these messages create an increase in the number of men of color that we see coming alongside us, standing side by side, proclaiming the truth of equality of women of all races. Thank you. God bless you. Merry Christmas.